Hi friends, I'm Saili Kale. This particular video will be answering a question that we are asked a lot. How do I prepare for GMAT with CAT? Or how do I simultaneously prepare for these two exams and what's the right way to go about it? So in this particular video, we'll be covering how to efficiently uh, prepare for both GMAT as well as CAT. What timeline should you actually follow? So let's dive in. Let's see what are the areas which are common to both of them, how we can group the topics together and how we should actually uh, order them in our preparation schedule. So let's first take a look at the conceptual overlaps between the exams. So the yellow part is basically the co uh, concepts which are there only in GMAT, the blue parts which are only in CAT and basically green is the overlap of the two. So when it comes to quant, uh, GMAT's quant is entirely a subset of CAT. There is no part of GMAT which is not there in CAT. Uh, but CAT also has geometry. But arithmetic, algebra, number systems, probability, uh, combinatoric statistics, all of that is part of CAT as well. In terms of difficulty, GMAT is easier version of CAT. So what I would say is that when you're preparing for CAT, the apart from geometry, everything else, the base version questions of everything else would serve as the uh, like the preparation for GMAT as such. So when you do the uh, easier questions of each of these arithmetic, algebra, geometry, that would serve as preparation for GMAT. So when you start your preparation, your uh, GMAT preparation in all of these topics will get over first. And after that, you will be taking a look at uh, like slightly more uh, difficult questions from each of these topics, specifically with CAT in mind. So if you are looking to prepare for CAT and GMAT simultaneously, what I would say is that uh, whenever you are planning to give your GMAT, leave your geometry for now, focus on the other parts and first try to solve all the uh, different uh, easy questions from all the different topics as such. Once that is done, you will be able to attempt your GMAT exam as such. And after that, you can focus on all the parts which are like the harder questions from each of the topic geometry post the exam as such. Now, let us take a look at data insights. Data insights is uh, very, very specific to GMAT. The uh, uh, like the similar section in CAT is basically data interpretation and logical reasoning. But to be honest, there is like day and night difference between the two. The only thing which is essentially common between the two sections are like charts, tables, data interpretation, tables as such, statistics. These are the concepts that are common to both of them. So what I would say is that start with charts and tables, start with descriptive statistics because that will help you immensely in cracking the data insight section. Most of the data insight sections would be you would be able to solve with those kind of concepts. Then apart from that, this would be uh, this would help you maybe in one set in DILR. So this won't uh, really not help you that much with your CAT preparation. But these are essentially basic concepts. So if you understand charts, you will be able to solve harder questions from charts. If you understand tables, uh, generally in CAT, you will get a very difficult table set as such. Table sets are very common in CAT, but they will be logical reasoning intensive as such. But still you need the basics, right? So you can get that basics done. So you can start answering GMAT questions. You can start answering GMAT mock exams, etc. And then continue your study with the harder questions for CAT. Uh, in addition to the common things between CAT and GMAT, CAT, uh, GMAT has data sufficiency questions which are not really seen in CAT, but the basis of data sufficiency in GMAT is basically arithmetic number system algebra, which we have already done. So you already know those concepts. So if you are actually starting off with this and then going over here, you will not even really do need to do much with data sufficiency. Data sufficiency will be like one additional step rather than starting something entirely new. There is verbal reasoning and that will require some amount of effort. Uh, uh, some amount of thinking qualitative sets are there uh, in uh, multi-source reasoning, some amount of critical thinking is involved, but only that area would be completely different from CAT. Otherwise, much of there's so much overlap, particularly with quant as well as data interpretation that much of your preparation would be done if you first focus on these areas. Now, let us consider verbal reasoning, which is basically the for CAT, it is reading comprehension and verbal ability. For GMAT, it is basically verbal reasoning. So reading comprehension is a big part of CAT. It is also a big part of GMAT. So if you are trying to optimize your preparation for both exams, what should you start with? Obviously, reading comprehension. Go deep into reading comprehension. Reading comprehension is difficult in both exams. It is not easy in GMAT, neither is it ever easy in CAT, which means that you're going to need a lot of practice, a lot of work, a lot of thinking. And this is basically one way you can make sure that you get a decent score in both exams. So the first thing that you should definitely do, apart from uh, like the overlap areas of quant, start with the quant overlap areas and also start immediately with reading comprehension because it is extremely important for both exams. It will be the basis for both sections as such. 
in terms of cat you have other questions which are like para jumbles para summary uh, oc para jumbles para insertion all of those questions can be handled later because they are smaller topics you can actually take a look at them after your gmat exam is over i'll explain the timeline as such but essentially geometry these extra topics you can actually do after your gmat exam is over because they are not that difficult to do they are not that intensive and geometry is intensive but you can handle it after gmat also uh, same over here this will take a lot of time so i would not say that leave it till gmat you should start immediately preparing for it but it is only for cat but still uh, it will take uh, dedicated practice so while you can leave this and this for after gmat this you have to start in preparation in tandem with gmat preparation as such now in gmat fe uh, the additional uh, work that is there is of critical reasoning what i would suggest is that while you are starting with your reading comprehension so start from here start this is like one priority this is two priority this is three priority why you are doing the reading comprehension also start working on the critical uh, reasoning questions why should you start with critical reasoning questions the critical reasoning questions essentially enable or enhance your comprehension skills they help you think clearly they, they will help you answer the inference based questions also better they will help you not only in the rc questions of gmat but also in the RC questions of CAT, even though critical reasoning is not part of CAT, understanding critical reasoning, understanding what can be inferred, what cannot be inferred, what is an assumption, what is what can strengthen the argument, what can weaken the argument, all of that will help you tremendously in reading comprehension of both exams. So when it comes to priority order, what should you focus on? Quant, the areas of overlap are the first priority because that help you will help you over here. Second priority is reading comprehension. Third priority, because this is going to take you so much time, even though it is not an area of overlap, you have to start with at the very same time as you start the remaining preparation. And fourth is critical reasoning. While it is not an area of overlap, it helps tremendously in this. So it is very important. So this is basically when it comes to overlap uh, and uh, what should be the uh, areas of focus. This is basically what you should focus on. Now, then it comes to after this is done, what should you do? Then start your preparation of the data sufficiency verbal reasoning questions of GMAT FE. Once GMAT FE exam is over, then come to the para jumbles, para summary, para completion. And then finally to geometry. Geometry and this should be done in tandem. It, your geometry, again, you're going to need a lot of practice also. But you can leave this till after your GMAT exam is over. So that is basically what I'm suggesting. So now we'll take a look at the topic coverage, how each of the topics helps with other topics. So over here, we have drawn a flowchart for you, which is slightly complicated. So let me explain what that flowchart is. So if you see the green parts of the flowchart are those uh, topics which are common to both exams, as we discussed earlier. Blue is that which is only part of GMAT. Purple is that which is only part of CAT. Now, essentially over here, if you see number systems and arithmetic, number systems and arithmetic is essential for uh, data insights for like the two part analysis for uh, uh, data sufficiency questions. These are essentially primary. These essentially lead to multiple things. They lead to uh, data sufficiency questions. They also lead to like multi source reasoning, two part analysis, everything. It also leads over here while that is not shown. So number systems, arithmetic sets, counting methods, descriptive statistics are extremely important concepts which lead to many of the uh, core concepts that are tested in GMAT in data insights. Also, algebra and combinatorics also lead to data sufficiency questions. They are fundamental to doing well in the GMAT quant. These are also extremely important questions when it comes to CAT as such. So I would suggest that this, because it is, if you see, it is leading to so many things, right? So it is one of the fundamental things that you should do, you should get done. And essentially, it will enable you to then do data sufficiency, then do multi-resource reasoning questions, then do two-part analysis, charts, tables, questions as such. Now. Then it comes to the question of data interpretation and logical reasoning. Do data interpretation and logical reasoning help you in all of these? Uh, data interpretation in a way will help you because in that when you are preparing for data interpretation, you are going to learn how to read charts, how to read graphs, how to read different types of charts, how to solve questions based on tables, all of that. All of that will help you. Logical reasoning might not help you, but it is still extremely important and given how uh, difficult it is to master it is still a important topic as such geometry will not help you see it does not lead anywhere logical reasoning also does not lead anywhere so these are not some things which are primary in the process but all, at the same time logical reasoning is so critical that i would say that it should still be done in tandem with things which are essentially primary these things are primary because they lead to many other subjects they will enable you to read other subjects as such understand other subjects if you directly go to multi-source reasoning you will not be able to understand what you have to do there so these are primary as such 
these two are not primary but this is still critical data interpretation is also primary because it will help you with uh, this data uh, like multi source using charts etc it is it will help you with all of that okay then you have reading comprehension and verbal ability uh, a critical reasoning so if you can see critical reasoning will help you in two part analysis because essentially a lot of critical reasoning is needed in the qualitative statements based data insights questions so there are multi source reasoning questions based on critical reasoning there are two part analysis questions based on uh, critical reasoning all of that now if you come to the verbal part of it see critical reasoning is flowing into many parts critical reasoning is helping you with multi source reasoning it is helping you with two part analysis it is helping you with reading comprehension it might even help you with verbal ability especially when you are looking for flow or chain of thought method so this also becomes primary this is primary this is primary and these if you start early enough it will help you considerably in the uh, like all the remaining topics that you have to do later on okay now if you take a look at the buckets what do the buckets stand for so the bucket first bucket is essentially uh, moderate effort high impact basically these are the topics where you put in a little bit of effort and you will get a lot of marks because these are extremely important carry a lot of weightage are critical are extremely important and are not at the same time not very difficult to achieve so in that obviously you have arithmetic arithmetic is a huge part of both quant in cat as well as quant in gmat it is the easiest part of cat it is the easiest part of gmat then you have descriptive statistics this is extremely important from the gmat perspective and it is very easy it is extremely easy to get done and once you do it you will find find many of the things in gmat much more uh, uh, that you can easily do them so that's why it's in this particular bucket critical reasoning is also in this bucket because it has so many impacts on other things critical reasoning requires some effort it is not an easy uh, topic to solve still it will have such a huge impact on your reading uh, comprehension scores it will have a huge impact on your data insight scores in the first bucket i would also add while it is not moderate effort it is still high uh, effort it is still very high impact is reading comprehension this is extremely important to get done even in the first bucket in the first instant itself along with logical reasoning while this is not moderate effort it is still very very high impact these are like the ultimate high impact topics that you have to do well in now we consider second bucket you have algebra algebra uh can come as part of certain uh, data sufficiency questions or certain two part analysis questions but mostly algebra comes as part of gmat quant so as such its impact is lower and it is a high effort uh, topic because it is high effort essentially because it takes a lot of time to master that topic so between arithmetic and algebra which should you actually do first which should you group first so you should first go with arithmetic you should first go with critical reasoning you should first go with descriptive statistics because they combined will help you unlock other topics that will become easier to do algebra you can put set me third is basically combinatorix and geometry combinatorix does not really help with much the basics of probability that if you know it might help with some two part analysis questions but it doesn't flow into any other topic as such it's not a fundamental topic for any other topic so it's not going to help you much there while arithmetic is a fundamental topic for combinatorics in many ways arithmetic questions are arithmetic understanding is needed to solve combinatorix questions number system uh, uh, number systems uh, understanding is needed to solve uh, combinatorics questions so this bucket is basically a way to tell you what you should group first so as i mentioned first do arithmetic do descriptive statistics do critical reasoning and also start with rc and lr in the second go you can start with algebra you can start with uh, uh table based reasoning stable charts etc in the third bucket number 3 put combinatorics geometry para jumbles para summary etc which have either a low weightage when it comes to considering both exams or basically are not high impact in terms of score so this is basically how we would suggest the key important thing to remember is do arithmetic first do logical reasoning and rc first do critical reasoning first do descriptive statistics first they will help you quite a bit in the both exams as such okay now let's go to a timeline as to when you should do what okay so starting with quant obviously you should put number systems arithmetic and statistics first number systems are basically you need not go deep into number systems for gmat you need basics of number systems you need to know what is hcf lcm what is divisibility all of that is enough the uh, advanced part of number system you can leave for later for cat and zat it is more relevant there so you can leave that for later okay uh, that is basically one part of basics of number systems are needed the advanced part of number systems you can do later along with algebra algebra you come uh, 
keep on continuing with algebra first do the basics of algebra with advanced parts of number systems then continue with advanced parts of algebra and then start with combinatorics once you finish combinatorics then finally you can start with geometry as such why have i kept geometry for last because at this point in september august and september you can take the gmat exam once you have taken the gmat exam till then if you have only basic understanding of ge geometry that is fine because that doesn't actually come on gmat exam so if you order it in this way you can keep basically geometry for last so that you can do it once the gmat exam is done so basically what happens is that once your gmat exam is done you can start working on geometry you can start working on the harder questions from arithmetic harder questions from uh, algebra combinatorics number systems all of that you can then focus from uh, september onwards okay now consider verbal verbal what should you start with critical reasoning and re uh, reading comprehension both are extremely important you should definitely start with that keep practicing critical reasoning as you go further and further into reading comprehension you will see how the critical reasoning helps you with reading comprehension after some time you can start with the va practice along with rc practice you should basically start some amount of va practice uh, from at least july so that you know what is para insertion questions you know what is uh, uh, para jumble questions you know what is uh, para summary questions because you have to start taking mocks also at that point of time so start with the verbal preparation around july and august as such and then post your uh, gmat attempt say if it is that august end you can then completely switch over and completely or uh, like practice of va initially focus more on rc and then switch over and focus more on va but after your gmat exam when it comes to data interpretation see first focus on tables charts uh, the uh, like understanding or reading of charts uh, you can also you will also should start with arrangements and simple puzzles as such einstein's puzzles the reason for that is that while that is not part of gmat it is fundamental to rest of cat uh, dilr puzzles and dilr is one of the most like lr uh, puzzles arrangements etc is one of the easiest topics and one of the most foundational topics so that's why we have put it up front and that will enable you to do the more harder sets from uh, uh, logical reasoning as such so start with di sets start with table starts and then also start simultaneously with einstein's puzzles etc uh, go basically each month on month uh, go towards more harder sets from the dilr section uh, in uh, data uh, di uh, data insights start doing more uh, complicated msr sets after your initial basics of table uh, table based uh, sets etc are done start doing the msr sets slightly later into your preparation because by then you will understand graphs by then you will be able to read tables all of that is needed for solving msr questions as such so for first focus on reading graphs and graph based questions and table and table based questions and then do the harder di sets from msr later on now another thing that you have to remember is that while you uh, progress on the data insights part uh, continue to solve data insights questions see data insights is slightly fairly different from dilr so these are essentially two different topics which you have to do in parallel with very uh, a limited overlap as such so again after your data insight sets are done you have to actually spend a lot of time on logical reasoning sets puzzles uh, and then you have these small small uh, sets that you have to take a look at like scheduling sets uh, roots and network sets uh, coin sets uh weights and balances there are like n number of different different types of smaller sets that can come and you have to essentially focus on all of them uh like uh, truth liar concept maxima minima venn diagram based four set venn diagram based sets so all of that also you should essentially keep uh, doing in the later half of your preparation once your gmat is done basically think that okay your gmat is done you can say that once the gmat is done your basic of cat is done almost all basics of cat are done other than like say some amount of verbal ability and some amount of logical reasoning from that point on you should just focus on harder questions from that point on you should say that my basics are basics are clear i have taken my gmat exam now i can focus entirely on revising the uh, revising the basics and then starting to solve harder and most uh, more more uh, serious questions from each of these topics so from like your uh, september onwards you can focus more on practice and especially more on solving harder questions so this is the basic idea of how you can actually more efficiently prepare for both of the exams order your preparation in this way such that you can give the gmat exam by the end of august get your cat basics done by then and from that point on after your gmat exam is over from that point on just focus on solving more and harder and harder questions from cat so this is basically how i would suggest on how to combine your preparation for both of these exams